And welcome to Frontline Health. Today we're coming to you live from Middletown, which is in upstate New York, home of Northern Medical Center, where Dr. Jinguan Yang is the CEO. He's also founder of ACES Medicine and founder of, in of Young Institute of Integrated Health. Dr. Yang, thank you so much for finding the time to sit down with us and answer some questions for our audience. It's my pleasure. Before we get into the topic of the webinar, which is aging and aging gracefully, can you tell us a little bit about Northern Medical Center? What do you do? Well, Northern Medical Center is really the Article 28 treatment and diagnosis center where we do primary care, mental health, pain management, and aesthetic medicine. And we're trying to bring integrated medicine model into everything we do. And if you come to our center, you get comprehensive evaluation for your health, and you get your mental health evaluated and provided to you with a management or treatment plans. And also, you have opportunity to experience acupuncture, Chinese herbal, herbal remedies, in addition to nutritional advice and dietary guidance. And of course, if you like to. Uh, take care of your skin. We have a mess bar, and if you want to take 20 years of your life from your face, and we have a cosmetic surgical center. Oh, wow. <laughs> the whole thing. Yes, one stop shop. <laughs> uh, how about the Young Institute of Integrative Health? Well, Young Institute of Integrative Health is mainly focused on mental health. So we're trying to apply integrative medicine model into mental health. For example, we offer advanced nutrient therapy. We offer your biofeedback, mm -hmm. and we offer transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy and the ketamine therapy. And particularly, we evaluate everybody coming to the door with quantitative EEG so we can better understand what's going on in every patient's brain. Wow. Uh, but today, we're talking about your ACES uh, medicine model, something that you pioneered, you founded. Uh, and how that really applies to aging. Can you break that down for us, what ACES stands for? Yes. Well, when I started practicing medicine in this country, there were so many different names mm -hmm. for medicine. There was alternative medicine, complementary medicine, integrative medicine, regenerative medicine, mm -hmm. functional medicine, mind-body medicine, you know. And they're really about, they're really talked about mostly the so I wonder how we can give someone a framework, a concept they can easily apply to take care of themselves or help others. So therefore I said, why don't we go back to the very basic of what human being is made of, right? Or what controls the human body. So I come up with this four components. First is anatomy, structure, the body, you know. When we age, the first things we notice, we get hair and gray, yeah. you know, we begin to develop wrinkles, you know, our posture changes, right? If you measure the bone density is going down, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, right? And the second part is the chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, every day we drink, we eat, and we take supplements. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're also exposed to virus, bacteria, toxicity in the environment, and that's all affect all by chemistry in the body, right? And the third, which I think is the most important component, and also least understood, is the energetic part of the body. When we talk about energy of the body, people say, what? What are you talking about? What is it? Actually, it is something we experience every day, and every time you go to see a primary care doctor or go to the uh, 
a medical center, the first thing they do is they measure your vital signs, your breathing, your body temperature, your pulses, and your blood pressure. Think about it. It is all electronic driven activities and functions, right? Then, furthermore, they again they do all kinds of electro um, measurements for your ground waves, for your heartbeat, for your nerve transmissions, for your muscle strength, and so on and so forth. What are they measuring? They can measure your energy again, right? So what keep us breathing? Keep our heart beating and keep our bowel moving is all driven by human energy. But the problem is we cannot visualize. So therefore, just like you and me, we don't see anything between us. But there's a pool of air, oxygen between us. We don't see it, right? But the same thing is human energy, we can't visualize. But there is one medicine <clears throat> that I had a chance to learn when I was 13 years old, which was traditional or ancient Chinese medicine. That is medicine has the whole map of what human energetic system is like and how it works. So that brings another dimension into healthcare. Right? Of course, everything we discussed so far is due to the body. You know, just like a car. You have body parts, you have chemistry, <clears throat> now you have electronic activities, right? So who is driving, right? There is a human soul or spirit or mind, whatever you want to call it, or consciousness, as driving and you know, control this body and body's activity. And it has a lot to do with how we take care of ourselves and how we behave ourselves. In a certain way, it determines the state of our aging process. Right? And so I think that S is representing soul or spirit. So that's how I said all the ACES model. So in this way, we can say, okay, what did I do today for my body parts? What did I do today for my chemistry? What did I do today for my energy? And what did I do? What did I do today for my soul? It's very easy to look at them and to apply them. Yeah, we usually, usually in the West, we really focus on the first two components, right? right. I want to go to the gym, I want to work out, I'm going to be stronger, right? Uh, I'm going to eat healthier, right? Treat the by cancer. But for energetics and the spirit, I feel like Eastern medical traditions have a lot more insights there. And uh, you going through the Chinese uh, medical schools, Western medical schools here in the United States, also studying the ancient Chinese medicine. I think you're, you were saying you're fifth generational doctor, so your father, grandfather, and so on, many people in your family have been studying ancient Chinese medicine. So you have this insight into life, into medicine, like nobody else. So can we start with the, uh, the physical, the anatomical part? And what do you see is the key component for better aging or smoother aging? I would like, <coughs> excuse me. I would like to focus on the cell of the body because everything is made of cell. And our cell is exists with a very fine membrane. That membrane is so thin about like even the soup bubble is a twenty times thicker than a membrane of cell. In other words, the Membrane cells are really, really thin and also fluid. It's very boring. And however, the functionality of that membrane depends on the integrity of its structure. And this integrity is controlled by a number of things. Particularly, I want to emphasize is the essential fatty acid. Particularly the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And they are the really major components of the structure of the membrane, also responsible for the signal transduction of 
between the cells, you know, between outside the cells and inside cells, and a lot of other functionality of the cell. So, therefore, I'm not just a surgeon, but I don't change people's skin or, 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 or bones, but I'm going to focus on that cellular level. I think the membrane of cell and also the membrane of the organelle inside cell, like the mitochondria, they're also very important. So I think that's I would suggest everybody to focus on that. How do we take care of the function and uh, integrity of the membrane? And there are so many struggles in it. If the membrane is not healthy, and it's going to develop what we call the senile cells. And the senile cells is a little bit different. I will talk about it a little later. Because when you have a damage to the membrane cells, the membrane can quickly patch and repair and fix it. But as for my audience, later for intermediate serious injury, the cell is just fine. But mostly it's intermediate level. And the cell can repair to a certain degree, but this cell become a senile or, or you know, sensitive cells. They're almost like someone who will be tired, stop working. But they're still doing something. They still make play active roles by uh, producing certain proteins mm -hmm. and by producing certain um, uh, a biological factors. And those factors on the one side can protect the body, on the other side can promote inflammation and even cancer. So therefore, you don't want to have too many senile cells in the body. Right. So therefore, we want to do everything, anything we can to protect the memory cell. How do you do that? <laughs> What's the best way? <laughs> well, interestingly, first of all, we know we have to um, from the we have to have a sufficient amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids, mm -hmm. and that mostly comes from the food. You know, we know. They're coming from you know, fish, coming from seeds, coming from you know, vegetables. However, body has what they call a uh, desaturated release of enzyme, kind of convert uh, fat you know, into the polyunsaturated fat. But as we age, the activity of that enzyme decreases. So therefore, it requires us to supplement a little bit more mm -hmm. of polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids. So supplementation is one thing. Another thing is really to prevent the you know, reduction of this enzyme's activity mm -hmm. by managing our stress, by having sufficient amount of sleep, mm -hmm. by um, certain kind of level of exercise mm -hmm. and also in eating a balanced diet because the membrane also need protein and need other electronic um, um, uh, electrolytes mm -hmm. and the minerals and the vitamins mm. so that's how we should do it and uh, we're going to you know um, develop a course and teach people exactly mm -hmm. what they can do for themselves through diet, through lifestyle changes, and also what kind of testing mm -hmm. you could do. You can actually now test your essential fatty acid balance. Mm -hmm. You need a balance. It's not just the one is more important than the other. For example, everybody is talking about supplementing omega-3. Right. You know, what about omega-6? Or as if omega-6 is a bad guy. <laughs> but actually, omega-6 is as important as omega-3. Both good guys. <laughs> yeah, both are good guys if they're in the right ratio. Mm. 
you know, you should have four times more omega-6 than the omega-3. Mm -hmm. But today, because of American or typical Western diet, mm -hmm. we have 20 times more omega-3 than omega-6 <laughs> omega than omega-3. Mm -hmm. And that means we have so much more <clears throat> omega and essential fatty acid that promote inflammation rather than reduce the inflammation. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And we need to keep the balance. So balance is not only the keywords for energy, but also keywords for biochemistry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very fascinating. Uh, isn't that um, uh, also part of the traditional school of thought in, in the East as well, with, uh, having the balance, not going to extremes? <laughs> yeah, Chinese medicine, um, has this concept of the yin and the yang, yeah, you know? Yeah. And you, if you look at that, yin and the yang is not a philosophical concept. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, a way to classify, to describe a phenomenon that exists in almost everywhere at every level, level including in human body, that always there's a two opposing components. Mm -hmm. There are generating each other or support each other, they also control each other to keep a balance. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about the neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. you always says one neurotransmitter is exciting your brain, mm -hmm. the other one inhibiting your brain, right? right? right okay. The same thing with blood sugar. There's a hormone to increase your blood sugar level, there's hormone decrease your blood sugar level. Mm -hmm. Same thing with calcium, regulations mm -hmm. and uh, everything, you know, you have a nerve system, you have a sympathetic system that make your heart beat fast, you know, and then you have a parasympathetic system that make your heart to go slow. Mm -hmm. So always two um, components that balancing each other. And we need to find the balance and not just to, to promote one excessively over the other. Mm. I see. Yeah, I find a lot of people just um, just focus on one thing, right. right? They're just like, oh, I just need to eat meat 24-7 and nothing else. And the others are say, oh, no, I just have to eat vegetables 24-7, nothing else, right? Yeah. And sometimes uh, it helps for certain types of people. Maybe they had certain dysfunction or they needed, right. like you said, supplementation right. of that specific thing. Uh, but it's actually the balance that have, gives you the longest life and the is that what you're saying? Yeah, but talking about extreme, you know, you hear stories like, uh, um, what's the uh, professor uh, 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 Peterson? Jordan Peterson. Yeah. yeah, he said that he, ever since he started eating the meat uh -huh. as a major source of food, yeah. and he feels so much better, and the same story went to his daughter. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember that? I've heard that story, yeah. yes. So then people would ask, well, how about that? Should, you know, should I do all, all meat? Uh -huh. You know, things like that. That shows that there's a individuality for everything. Mm. You know, what works for him mm -hmm. doesn't mean it works for you. Mm -hmm. But it may work for someone else like him. Mm -hmm. So there are always a group of people say, yeah, this is the best diet I have had. <laughs> Actually, I have some theory about it and uh -huh. we can talk about it later. Okay. And uh, when we go into the um, biochemistry. Okay, well, let's, let's go into biochemistry. I, I'm really fascinated how, the, how, how you see it from your perspective. What is the core of the core problem of the biochemical processes that can promote longevity or have yeah. Well, you already see that biochemistry and anatomy yeah. cannot be separated mm. because the membrane of the cell, which is a structure, mm -hmm. but it depends on the essential fatty acids, right. which is biochemistry, right? right. So, right. so they're all connected. But in biochemistry, and we people think these days automatically into drug or pharmaceutical products. 90% of the things is right. sold, sold by a drug, yeah. Yes, but actually we're talking about <clears throat> the water in the body mm -hmm. and electrolytes mm -hmm. and uh, minerals, vitamins, 
in essential fatty acid, amino acids, hormones, enzymes, and neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. That's a biochemistry we're talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And all of that have a everything to do with what we eat, what we drink. Mm -hmm. So in the way, we have a lot to do with our biochemical health mm -hmm. by making right choices. Mm -hmm. However, there's one more thing that we don't always have control is the genetic predispositions. Mm, right. You know, everybody is genetically different in the way how our body metabolize everything. You know, some of them are, on, are not able to absorb or utilize a certain chemicals or certain uh, nutrients, right? Mm -hmm. For those people, and they have to go, one, go get treatments with them, or they have to have a diet that is a little bit extreme mm. for other people, mm -hmm. you know. And um, going back to the um, Jordan Peterson stories, mm -hmm. you know, I found people who do better with meat diet are the people who I consider them undermethylated. Oh, really? Yeah, because they need a very uh, that need a lot of L-methionine, which is amino acid coming from uh, the meat mostly, mm -hmm. and to provide a methyl uh, group as a donor mm -hmm. to increase their methylation process. Oh, wow. Okay, so our, the methylation is really what I want to focus on today because there's so much to talk about by biochemistry, you know. Right. right. You can spend hours and hours <laughs> having biochemistry uh, uh, <laughs> class here, but I want to focus on one thing that people are not so familiar with, but began to pay attention, mm. is a biochemical process called the methylation, mm -hmm. okay? Methylation. If anatomy, I focus on membrane mm -hmm. and the chemistry, I'm focusing on methylation. Okay. Okay. So what is methylation? Methylation is a biochemical process, and um, uh, one molecule provides the other molecule a methyl group, which is one carbon, three hydrogen. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And this process is called methylation. And it involves a bunch of enzymes, a bunch of cofactors like minerals and uh, vitamins, mm -hmm. okay? But this methylation is so important because they regulate DNA. Mm -hmm. Because we all know so many chronic illnesses, even aging, how long we live, mm -hmm. has everything to do with a genetic factors, mm -hmm. right? Part of it. Part of it. Yeah but we cannot change our DNA sequences, right? Right. But the body has a way to regulate it, meaning they can det determine whether they want to turn the gene on or off. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a bad genes right. that can really cause a trouble for you. Mm -hmm. But if your body's methylation is strong enough, it's able to keep it silent. Uh -huh. You, they don't express. Uh -huh. So methylation is a important in terms of keep those bad genes silent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that means it is able to keep all kind of things that cause a damage to our body, including aging process. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so that is important. But about 20, 30 percent of population. Mm -hmm they are under-methylated, meaning they don't methylate enough. They have trouble with this process. Yeah, nice. they have trouble with the process. Mm -hmm. And those people actually will have a tendency um, to have all kinds of uh, other health issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, it's interesting because they can have a certain personality traits. Really? For example, they are the one who is very driven uh -huh. self-motivated uh -huh. and perfectionistic uh -huh. Uh -huh. and overachiever, oh, really? okay? <laughs> and they're very competitive, by the way. Uh -huh. So that's all good quality because make them very successful in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, mm -hmm. 
if this affects their brain and then they cause problem with lack of serotonin or dopamine mm -hmm. and make them uh, vulnerable to develop a conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, major depression, ADHD, mm -hmm. you know, some of them really have to engage in addictive kind of behaviors. stimulating risk behaviors because they need to more, you know, the uh, stimulation in order to have a, enough dopamine, you know, mm. for their brand. So they don't do it really for fun. They really do it for survival. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so let's understand them. They said, well, you know, <laughs> I know somebody who has to periodically jump from a high building uh, in order to in order to experience that. And uh, it's, it's, it's like a self-medicating uh -huh. uh, with those things. And for those people, a, the animal meat mm -hmm. will help them mm -hmm. because they provide them the nutrients they need. They have a lot of zinc, which they need, mm -hmm. a lot of L-mycinin, they need that, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's why those people are good. Actually, vegetables, folic acid, we think is all good. Mm -hmm. But for this particular population, who has a serotonin or dopamine deficiency in the brain, mm -hmm. those folic acid actually does the opposite for them. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's why they feel so good. Of course, mm -hmm. it's not about all meat. It's what they don't eat. Of mm -hmm. course, they stop eating carbs, mm -hmm. you know, glutens, right? right? And sugars, so all that other things is bad for them. Mm -hmm. Just by eliminating those things are very helpful. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not about all meat diet. Mm -hmm. I'm just using this as example. Right, right, right. On the other hand, there are a certain group of people who are over methylating, mm -hmm. meaning they consume a lot of folic acids in the brain, in the body. So they really need supplementation for that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're going to be extremely anxious. They're going to have trouble focusing. They're going to um, have all kinds of uh, sensitivities mm -hmm. uh, and toxicities um, involved with like uh, uh, generating health issues, particularly mental health issues. Really? You know, they're not really achieving much, uh -huh. you know, and they don't have the motivations, they don't have the drive. Mm -hmm. They're very vulnerable to emotional stress. Looks like depression. Yeah, yeah, like depression. yeah, yeah, anxiety and trouble sleeping, all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But how it all comes to aging, mm -hmm. because if methylation, there are studies mm -hmm. about aging. Actually, recently there are articles about someone uh, did a study of six people mm -hmm. and they measured their biological age mm -hmm. and then they um, measured their methylation mm -hmm. status and then they provide them, quote unquote, a meth methylation promoting a nutrients, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after eight weeks, they measure them again. Mm -hmm. And the five of them complete the study or six of maybe they're all complete, but five of them have an average biological age going down 4.5 years. Yeah. <laughs> in eight weeks. Yeah, in eight weeks. Wow. You know, so anyway, there are so much of things you can do mm -hmm. for, for, you know, biochemistry, but I consider managing your methylation balance mm -hmm. is the key mm -hmm. to managing everything else because methylation is involved in all chronic diseases, mm. cancer, cardiovascular disease, liver disease, diabetes, Mm. You name it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we could just focus on one thing and managing the well, mm -hmm. it, it does a lot for us. Otherwise, you're going to get lost into uh, what should I do? What should I eat? Mm -hmm. What should I take? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think focus on methylation is the key, not of only for aging, but for all kind of chronic health problems. Fascinating. Uh, and I love how you're uh, mentioning it's about the balance or finding the balance and it's different for different people. So you yeah. have to understand which balance is right for you. Right. Oh, wow. 
Okay. <laughs> Fascinating. And we're just, just, that's just the first two topics. How about the energy? How does the energy? Touch? Well, the energy part, I have to bring into um, the ancient Chinese medicine into it. Right. Again, I'm not going to give you a Chinese medicine <laughs> lecture. I wrote two books about it. If, yes. if, if you're interested, <laughs> I wrote one book called For the General Public called the Facing East, mm -hmm. the ancient health and beauty secrets for modern age. Mm -hmm. And I co-authored that with my friends and clients, Norma Kamali. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that was published in 2016 mm -hmm. um, by Carboholic, uh, uh, Harper Collins. Mm -hmm. So people probably can still find it somewhere uh, on Amazon or online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the second book I wrote called Clinical Acupuncture in Ancient Chinese Medicine. That's a textbook for Oxford University Press mm. for professionals, you know, mm -hmm. healthcare professionals, because I really want to explain to them that ancient introducing ancient Chinese medicine, acupuncture into health and medicine mm -hmm. is not a alternative, is not a optional, mm -hmm. it's essential. Mm -hmm. because they add the third piece that is missing mm -hmm. in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I used to um, say that our current medical centers, hospitals are like a car shops mm -hmm. without electronic engineers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because we focus so much on structure and the chemistry and we nobody understand how we treat them energetically, right? Yes, yes, you know. Yes. And so, but anyway, I think the Chinese medicine is a medicine for energy. Mm -hmm. And there people of course say, well, you know, how do we prove that? How did we know? And we can't because we don't have the technology and the science yet mm -hmm. to understand, to visualize, to comprehend the energetic problems mm -hmm. or energetic structures um, physiologies uh, in human body. Mm -hmm. So whoever developed ancient Chinese medicine, which I do not take any credit for it, <laughs> had ability uh -huh. to visualize it. We just inherited it. Uh -huh. You know, so even I, we call it a Chinese medicine. I'm not even sure that was created by Chinese or not, mm -hmm. but definitely Chinese has inherited those body of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I prefer to call it ancient Ch Chinese medicine rather than traditional mm -hmm. because <clears throat> a lot of traditional Chinese medicine taught today actually no longer traditional because they have been modified, modernized, even westernized. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they no longer emphasize on um, emotional components mm -hmm. and spiritual components. Mm -hmm. and the lifestyle components anymore, mm -hmm. right? And that's the critical part of the energy medicine. But again, what's the key? Yeah, what is the? So we start with the cell, then we start yeah. with the lation. Yeah, so anatomy, we focus on membrane of cell. Yeah. Chemistry, we focus on methylation. methylation. Mm -hmm. And what do we focus on energy? Mm -hmm. Is the kidney. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so whenever you hear words kidney, from a Chinese medicine doctor, the real one. <laughs> it's not the same kidney, uh -huh. okay? It includes the kidney as a structural organs, but uh -huh. we're describing kidney as a energetic center mm. and with a energetic partner, mm -hmm. which is the urinary bladder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and with a energetic network mm -hmm. that distribute to every other parts of your body. Mm -hmm. To exercise is tremendous amount of functions mm -hmm. energetically. Mm -hmm. And that function we will never thought in modern medicine when we look at it from the structural level right. or that anatomic level or chemical level. Right. For example, it is responsible for the development of person. So when you develop from a kid, baby, mm -hmm. and you grow, mm -hmm. and you develop your bones, your brains, your heights, and everything, mm -hmm. it depends on how strong you have inherited 
the kidney energy and the kidney essence mm -hmm. from your parents. Really? Okay. <laughs> so that determines your brain development mm -hmm. and how your brain function mm -hmm. and also responsible for your, your, your height and uh, your bone structure, how strong you are, mm -hmm. and also determine how good your hair is, <laughs> and determine how well you hear, uh -huh. and determine how strong motivation you have, mm -hmm. and determine how you are able to overcome fear. And of course, determine your sexual functions and your ability to reproduce oh, of wow. both male and female, okay? And of course, we consume them, right? As we develop, right. as we reproduce. So every time we consume, we do that, we consume the kidney energy. Mm -hmm. As the kidney energy and essence decline, mm -hmm. we begin to see signs of age mm -hmm. or aging. Okay, for example, we begin to see our hair become gray. <laughs> we begin to have a tinnitus in our ears, or eventually we don't hear very well. Mm -hmm. And we begin to become forgetful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even going to more extreme, become demented. Mm -hmm. And then our bone density mm -hmm. go down and we develop osteoporosis, mm -hmm. or even we are vulnerable to get fracture. And another thing we begin to notice, not only we stop being able to reproduce, <clears throat> right? So I, I see so many women at the age 35 or after and trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, even someone at 45 and 50 trying to get pregnant. That's extremely hard mm -hmm. because at that age, your kidney energy and essence is very low. Mm -hmm. And of course, in modern medicine, we call you don't have enough hormones or ability, you know, to support the fertility. Mm -hmm. But in Chinese medicine, that's what it is. Mm. Okay. And um, then you begin to see your ability to control your bladder and the bowels begin to de decrease. Oh, wow. That's why if you began to find yourself having to get up more frequently at night mm -hmm. or go to bathroom more often if you drink water mm -hmm. and you know your kidney energy is not utilizing the water, metabolize the water as it did before, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what the function of the kidney energy. And so you begin to have more frequent urinations, you even develop incontinence, mm -hmm. right? And uh, all of that really becomes, um, uh, contributes to the aging process. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Energetically, if you want to slow down the aging, if you want to age gracefully, mm -hmm. you have to preserve, protect, and nourishing your kidney energy. Mm -hmm. so, wow. <laughs> so you can't remember it. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> so if many you, things. <laughs> if you don't remember what kidney energy does to human right. being, you go to nursing home. You see them all. Mm. You see all the symptoms. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The hair gray, they don't recognize you, don't remember things. Mm -hmm. They have to wear diapers. They're shortened, they're, you know, they shrink with bones. Think about all that. So mm -hmm. that's really a, a manifestation of, and that they don't hear you very well. Mm -hmm. So basically out of all the different energy systems, this is the one that's key to focus on when, Absolutely. when it comes to aging. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. So how do you do it? How do you can you manage it, or is it just a continuous decline? Well, I think tips? I think this is why we wrote that entire book about it. Uh -huh. You know, facing east because mm -hmm. the what affects kidney energy is a I believe it. You know, the few important factors. Mm -hmm. Number one is our sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. Think about what human being. You know the energy is designed for is really for reproducing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about for women, mm -hmm. every month they have to have a period. Mm -hmm. Why do they have a period? Because they didn't get pregnant, mm -hmm. right? So they have to try again. 
So every month, their body prepare them to be pregnant, to be able to, you wow. know, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. <laughs> reproduce seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So every time they have that, it consume the kidney energy and essence. Mm. Okay. So when we depleted it, what happens? They stop having menstruation, mm -hmm. and we call it the menopause, right? Mm -hmm. They stop. That's it. No more. Mm -hmm. We consume it. For the man, man doesn't have the menstruation that is obvious, mm -hmm. but man does ejaculate every time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's to help, you know, reproduce. Mm -hmm. So every time we ejaculate, that consume piece of energy and the essence of the kidney. Oh, wow. Right? So they make sure you have them. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were younger, we have lots of them, mm -hmm. right? You know, and but then as you age, you get the less and the less, mm -hmm. less and the less, the same thing. Mm -hmm. You consume that. Mm -hmm. Of course, some human being, you know, we all, human being all want to have a pleasure, not <laughs> want to have pain. So they may overdo it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may excessively masturbating mm -hmm. or compulsively masturbating. And then they will have trouble because they can get prematurely aged. Mm. So we're not saying, you know, sex is bad. Or we're not saying masturbation is bad. And we say, when you do excessively, that's what happens. You're mm. going to find yourself um, become having trouble focusing, mm -hmm. concentrating, mm -hmm. lack of motivations, mm -hmm. and fatigued, tired. Mm -hmm and have more frequent urinations, mm -hmm. have trouble sleeping and bad dreams, you know, a lot of things can happen and you can look more aged than people who do not do that. Wow. So it's funny because in Western medicine, they, they look at uh, older people and say, oh, do, are they still sexually active? And they consider, in West, they would consider, oh, maybe it's like a sign of they, they're healthy. Right. But it doesn't mean that they're healthy. It just means that they still have kidney energy and they're still going after it. <laughs> you know, what it is, it really is, you know, we're looking at the cause and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the fact. Yeah. So we think, you know, we don't understand this piece in modern medicine. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we always say the more the merrier. Right. 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 So almost like we encourage people, we make it abnormal if you cannot do as much as you are younger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's problem. Mm -hmm. No, that's not problem. That's a natural progression. Pro progression. Yeah, yeah. Of course, everybody inherited a different amount of kidney energy, you know, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, someone can do this much, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can do the same, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So you can't say, well, look at this person. He lives this long. He can do this much. The only reason is, He's lucky he inherited a very strong <laughs> kidney energy essence from his parents. Uh -huh. So that's another issue with today's um, uh, people's life. People getting married less and the, uh, later and the later. Mm. They began to have a child later and the later. Mm -hmm. So basically when they're trying to get pregnant, mm -hmm. they already have a deficient mm. kidney energy essence themselves. I see. And they utilize, you know, um, we call it artificial fertilizations, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, IVF or something mm -hmm. or drug to help them. Mm -hmm. And that's really good. That's really not good mm -hmm. for the child. Mm -hmm. It's good for them. They're able to get pregnant, to have a child. But for the child, they begin to have a more health problems. Mm -hmm. If you look at the statistics, and I believe there's the older you are and the more likely the child would have some conditions such as ADHD mm -hmm. or even autism. I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's don't quote me on that. But health issue, the health of the child have a lot to do with the age of parents. Mm -hmm.
and uh, I'm glad it didn't happen to me <laughs> because my my mother had me when he she was uh, 40 years old. <laughs> but I could be smarter <laughs> if she had me earlier. <laughs> I think you did pretty well. <laughs> okay, but can I put you on the spot? Have you helped people to get pregnant just by focusing on kidney energy? Have you? Yeah, you of have, course. You and have that um, we have done that a lot. Right. And because the kidney energy, we only talk about one thing. Uh -huh. the, so a lot of times kidney energy um, exists. Mm -hmm. You do have it, uh -huh. but somehow it has been blocked. Mm. It has been fragmented. It's not being utilized. Mm. So I will give you one example of a, a woman who suffer from what they call premature uh, ovary a failure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she was like in menopause in her uh, 30s wow. and uh, had a bone densities has a, a hair has a trouble with the bladder is like someone in their 70s 80s wow. she had to go to the bathroom almost every five minutes uh -huh. she couldn't hold any water uh -huh. she wouldn't she doesn't have any sexual appetite on uh, her uh, bone density was extremely bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, of course, she got married. She wanted to get, have a family. She was only like 30 something. So we are, I treated her and with acupuncture, with herbal remedies that support kidney energy. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She was able to regain the period. Mm -hmm. She was able to have normal sex life and she was, she got pregnant. Oh, wow. <laughs> You know, so for her, it wasn't that she depleted all that for the reason I will mention later, that's her energy was blocked. Mm. And what blocked the kidney energy the most? What? <laughs> you know, as I said, if I want to st structurally hurt somebody, mm -hmm. well, I have to touch you. Mm -hmm. If I want to chemically hurt somebody, mm -hmm. I have to poison you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but for energetically, I don't need to do anything. I just need to say something mean to you mm. or even give you a dirty look. Uh -huh. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's a powerful energy. And this um, patient was you know, abused from a very young age mm. and had lots, lots of fear, fear. instilled in her. Mm. And the fear is the most powerful energy that block your kidney mm -hmm. function. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, when people in extreme fear, what happened to them? Oh, they saw themselves, right? They go. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. yeah. They lose control of their bladder mm -hmm. and the bowels because their kidney energy was shocked, mm. you know, so they're unable to regulate, mm -hmm. you know, control. So that's how the another important is overcoming the fear mm -hmm. is critical in terms of protecting our kidney energy and and you know aging gracefully. So wow. for you anyone want to age gracefully energetically they have to really get rid of as much fear that have been carried around for mm. all the lifetime. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the trauma? Uh, because uh, if there's fear, there must be some other emotion, right, to balance it out. Absolutely. So how does when work? you have a fear, the next emotion is really anger, resentment. Mm. And those energy, those always also affect another important organ closely related to the kidney is the liver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Liver is responsible for free flow energy in the entire body, mm -hmm. everywhere. So therefore, when you are experiencing anger resentment, doesn't matter someone is angry at you mm -hmm. or someone made you angry at them, mm -hmm. it does the same thing to your body. Mm. You know, wow. that's why, you know, when people say, oh, you are pain in the neck. <laughs> and that's true <laughs> because energetically, yeah. the liver, energetic part of the gallbladder goes all the way to uh -huh. your neck uh -huh, uh -huh. and your shoulder. Wow. And, uh, and go to your temple area, go on top of your head. That's where you get headaches, yeah. you know, yeah. um, with those people. 
and they're producing another bunch of health problem for women. It's like depression, mm. insomnia, mm. Um, a reflux, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, breast problems, fibroids in the uterus, cramps, and you name it. That's mm. all they're going to have. For men, they don't get this kind of problem. What they get? They get a heart attack and a stroke. Really? <laughs> wow. So those are the things very, you know, the most important, the uh, energetic um, the pathogens actually is the chronic stress mm -hmm. that is a mix of anger, resentment, fear, sadness, worry, you know. So those things are very bad mm -hmm. for us. That's why I feel like being a neurologist mm -hmm. in my former life was not enough. <laughs> so that's how I come to this country to become a psychiatrist. Mm. So I bec because that's how important our emotional well-being. Think about our thoughts, mm -hmm. our emotions, mm -hmm. and our behaviors. It's all manifestation of energy. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. So I even consider psychotherapy, talk therapy, like you and I have in this conversation, is an energetic exchange, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. So anyway, so I think if we don't have the energetic medicine as a part of our health care mm -hmm. and our medical care, we're missing big. Mm, that's fascinating. So, uh, and we just talked about kidney. I mean, there are a lot more other components to the human body but you're saying kidney if you want to age well it's the kidney yeah. if it's uh for the biochemistry it's really about the methylation right and the structure is the cell so but there's another one right of course there's the last component and there's a lot more components <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> you know i don't overwhelm our audience now let's yeah. just give, use this as an example yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you want to learn more i put six hours uh -huh. courses to yes. elaborate on each one of them mm -hmm and particularly what you could do yourself mm -hmm. and what supplements you could take mm -hmm. and what kind of doctor mm. you could go to to help you right, and right, what right. kind of tests you could do, uh -huh. you know, and that kind of will be... Um, we'll have know. a link for that, right, Lena? We'll have a link for that under the... Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. In the description so you guys can sign up or uh, put your email or, or pay or subscribe you'll find out more about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i'm very fascinated about the this last the spirit component how do you look at that well before we go there let's look at about emotions okay, or okay. the stress everybody said well stress is so important because stress produces cortisone so cortisone you know affects in creating inflammation so all that mm -hmm. so that shows that energy mm -hmm. chemistry mm -hmm. and structure they're all interrelated yeah. they're affecting each other mm -hmm. they're dependent on each other mm -hmm. but what is the stress mm -hmm. stress is our subjective response mm -hmm. emotional and physical particularly and cognitively to what's happening in front of us, yeah. in front of us mm -hmm. right so in the way the same thing happens to a hundred people mm -hmm. and they're all going to have a different response what determines that response, mm -hmm. right? So that has a lot to do with the value proposition about what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if you perceive what is happens is a bad thing, mm -hmm. you're going to be angry. Mm -hmm. You're going to be upset, right? Right. And you're going to do something about it, right? Right. Or if you're not going to do something about it, you probably do something even bad to yourself. Mm -hmm. So one way or other, you're going to be either, you know, have anger against others or have a, suppress your anger against yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why we say that anger is a poison you drink hoping somebody else is going to die. <laughs> right. You know, it's so hurtful to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at things, well, actually, this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at it positively. Mm -hmm. That's why positive psychology and thinking positive is so important mm -hmm. if you can do that, mm -hmm. right? But it's hard to do because you don't know what is good, what is bad, mm -hmm. right? 
So it has a lot to do with what? With our belief system. Mm -hmm. What do we believe? You know, if we believe one way and we look at that thing, we mm -hmm. think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. If we believe the other way, mm -hmm. now we think that is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So the belief system has a lot to do. So what is a belief system is basically what our soul mm -hmm. is thinking of. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I believe I think that is, you know, um, how do we define that? Mm -hmm. How do we define our spirituality? Mm -hmm. You know, you think it is another Eastern thing. <laughs> no, it is not. You have it too, because yeah. <laughs> in a very conventional medical book called the uh, treatment and diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Every year they update one. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a chapter called the end of life care. Mm -hmm. And there's a section about spirituality. Mm -hmm. And in that section, it describes how we measure it. Mm -hmm. And it almost says like, you know, spirituality is different from religion, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a religious affiliation, but everybody has a spirituality because everybody has souls, okay? Mm -hmm. What a soul believes is your spirituality. Mm -hmm. For example, what is your meaning and the purpose in life, mm -hmm. right? So everybody has some, you can say, I, my meaning purpose is, is to make as much money as possible. <laughs> That's fine. That define your right. spirituality at this point. Okay. And then what is your relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. and with the universe? Mm -hmm. Right. And can you describe that? You know, and or the third thing is, is there a high power, any life above us? Mm -hmm. Or if there is one, you could say no. There's no high power. I'm the highest power. <laughs> That's fine. That's your spirituality, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. If you do believe there's high power, then the question is, what is your relationship with the high power? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you would say the f another component, you know, measurement is, what is your understanding about former lives mm -hmm. or previous lives or afterlives? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or reincarnation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say, I don't believe any of this. I just, one life, that's it. Mm -hmm. And I come nowhere. I, I'm going to go nowhere. It's it. I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, for 100 years, I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's your spirituality. Mm -hmm. Then number five would be, what is your understanding about people have to go through hardships, mm -hmm. tribulations, mm -hmm illness, mm -hmm. disease, and death, mm -hmm. right? How do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Because you look at this world, you know, it's full of miseries mm -hmm. and full of unfortunate situations. Why? How do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So those answers, whatever they are, in the way define your spirituality. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will evolve, it will change, right? Mm -hmm. This year, you may believe this way, next year, you may change, mm -hmm. or you may change it back. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a process, a progression. But what I think is important for us mm -hmm. in terms of anti-aging, mm -hmm. because it is our belief drive our emotions and thoughts and behaviors, mm. you know? And it's our emotion drives our, uh, our thoughts drive our emotions, or sometimes emotion drives our thoughts, but they're all going to reflect in our behaviors. Mm -hmm. And our behaviors have everything, anything to do with our physical well-being, mm -hmm. right? So in the way, I feel like, yes, we start by paying attention to the body. Everybody see it, everybody right. care about it. Right. But really, we should probably thinking from top down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, our spiritual health determine our, you know, emotional behavioral health, our emotional behavioral health 
what determine our physical health, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of, and also it affects other parts of uh, components related to our aging process, like relationships, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and people live longer because they have a better relationships. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that's another thing. Yes. Right. We found, that's a, yeah. we found that. It's <laughs> important. So that's why I feel like looking at aging, mm -hmm. you really have to look at all four components. But still, we're still focusing on the body. Right. Everything we do, even we emphasize the spiritual health, is still trying to keep this body living as long, as healthy, mm. as happy as possible, mm -hmm. or even beautiful. Mm -hmm. But, hey, if we do everything perfect, how long are we going to live <laughs> physically? <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know. How many? 100 years? 100 years, <laughs> 120 years, 150 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. But eventually, what happens? we're going to disappear physically. Mm -hmm. And what about our soul, mm -hmm. our spirit? If we do have one, mm -hmm. where do they go? What's their future? Mm -hmm. I think that's probably something we need to pay attention. So aging has a two parts, mm -hmm. the age of the body and the future, the fate of our soul. Mm -hmm. So while we're taking care of this body, we have to take care of our soul. By doing that, it's not only help our physical body to live longer, healthier, and happier, even more beautiful, mm -hmm. but it also help the future of our soul, if you believe it. Mm -hmm. So I think wow. that's why, and this is important, mm -hmm. right? And the people say, well, if that is the case, why do we care about this body? <laughs> well, the answer is simple. Without the body, we can't give the soul opportunity to make right choices. Wow. So that's really, so that's why our body is very precious. We have to take care of it so that our soul have opportunity, you know, mm -hmm. to do its job, make refine self and create a better future for itself. Mm. So no matter what belief system you come from, what religion you come from, I think this is the fundamentals apply to everyone. And it's fascinating how you're saying how the, if basically if, if our soul, if we understand uh, pain, suffering, all these components differently, it will reflect in our emotional states. Of course. And it will reflect in our energetic systems, which it reflects in our biochemical processes, mm -hmm. right? And which reflects in our anatomical structures. Right. right? Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not easy to do, but at least we have a framework. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a system mm -hmm. that we can really look at them simultaneously. Mm -hmm and we can apply something practical mm -hmm. to each one of them, mm -hmm. you know? So let's say if I want to take care of my membrane of the cells, mm -hmm. you know, I want to manage my stress, I want to sleep well, I want to exercise, I want to eat or have enough, you know, polyset unsaturated fatty acids and the minerals and the proteins. Mm -hmm. If I want to manage my methylation, I want to do tests to know what kind of epigenetic mm. status of me and what I can do mm -hmm. and accordingly mm -hmm. to managing my methylation balance, mm -hmm. okay? And energetically, I say, okay, I didn't know this piece of information in the yeah. past, but from now on, I'm going to look into anything, everything I can do to let it go, any fear mm -hmm. I'm carrying, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, we're not even cautiously or cognitively aware of it. Mm. We suppress our negative emotions to the point that we don't even know they existed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And particularly for those people who had experienced trauma in their early lives, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us, including myself, growing up in the communist China, mm -hmm. and we grew up with fear. Mm -hmm. That's how right. the country was wrong based on instilled fear in people. Mm -hmm. And we think we don't have it, but we do, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so that's something you really want to do. And then the, of course, there's medicine for it, right? Mm -hmm. 
And for anatomic, you know, you can do surgery, you can do uh, manipulations, you can do exercise, you can eat healthy. For chemistry, you can take uh, nutritional supplements, right. you can eat healthy diet, mm -hmm. and then on, under certain circumstances, you can even take medicine for it, mm -hmm. right? And then energetically, your healthy lifestyle, managing your stress, sleeping well, exercising, meditating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why people are playing yoga, meditation, or qigong. Mm -hmm. What are they? Mm -hmm. They're the exercise, they're the, the self-care for your energy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you said, I want to do something for my soul, right. okay? <laughs> I know sooner or later, I'm going to be done with this life. Or some people even say, I don't even care about to be here forever. I want to see where I'm going after that. And there is a system called life cultivation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And life cultivation is not a religious practice. It's basically someone mm -hmm. who knows where your soul comes from mm -hmm. and what you have to do in order to, go to bring your soul home. Mm -hmm. or to do or to be a better place mm -hmm. and they basically tell you what to do what not to do what to think what not to think mm -hmm. so that you can achieve that goal mm -hmm. which is a life cultivation mm -hmm. but unfortunately human being does not always recognize or like mm. that idea <laughs> because you're talking about spiritual practice yes yeah, spiritual practice <laughs> So, so, so think about today. You put it very medically. <laughs> yeah, I, that for me, it's medical. Yeah, yeah. So I yes. call the I call the spiritual medicine. Right. You know, it, it's a medicine for your soul. Right. You know. Right, right, right. But I can't practice that. Uh -huh. You know, I need that myself. Right. You know, so that's what it is. So it's it's a very hard. But the concept of life cultivation mm -hmm. uh, is actually is existing all cultures, not mm. in China. In Chinese culture, we have a Buddhist practice, we have Taoist practice, mm -hmm. and in other countries, they have their own mm -hmm. life cultivation system, mm -hmm. which originally was just a teach you how to cultivate your spirit. Mm -hmm. But later on, it become a religious organized practice. That's mm -hmm. a different story. Mm -hmm. But I'm focusing on the original teacher, original teaching. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, original practice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know i think that is really the essence of the spiritual medicine if you will mm -hmm. helps you uh, guide your spirit and make proper decisions so that emotionally you're balanced right. going back to that idea of balance yeah right? yeah of, yeah of having calmness of yeah. thought or having a balance interesting wow fascinating <laughs> oh my goodness uh you know where we are on time oh we're way over okay so uh, we're going to answer some questions. There's lots of people waiting to ask you questions. I, I mean, I have myself questions, but uh, let's have a let's give a chance to our audience to ask questions. And uh, for anybody who's on Twitter or X or on YouTube, please click on the link below and come over. We're going to do the second part on Epoch Times. If uh, you click on the link below, you can uh, watch it for free. Uh, just come over to the uh, to the to the other place. Now, if you're watching on Epoch TV already. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be back in 30 seconds, about a minute, uh, and we'll answer your questions. See you in a second. More than just beautiful dance. It's a touch of the divine. More than just legends. It's the beautiful culture and wisdom of China before communism. More than just a performance. It's an experience that awakens the soul. Lincoln Center, NJ Pack, State Theater, Purchase, and Stamford. Starting March 28th. Tickets at genyun.com. Yeah. So cool. It's the coolest conversation right now.
Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us today with uh, Dr. Yang Jing Duan. Uh, so Dr. Yang, the number one upvoted question is, um, can you summarize and give us your formula for anti-aging? Well, I would say that I have to keep reminding myself mm -hmm. what I do every day for my body health mm -hmm. and for my chemical health and for my energy and for my soul. Mm -hmm. So my formula is um, basically keep focusing on those four areas. Mm -hmm. For example, I do do physical exercise. Mm -hmm. I play ping pong mm -hmm. once a week or twice a week. I do take a walk. I do lift the weights. Mm -hmm. And uh, chemically, I'm eating very healthy or, and clean. Mm -hmm. I stay away from alcohol. I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. and uh, I don't get myself exposed in the, in the strong sunlight, mm -hmm. and uh, I, um, I don't eat processed meat or food, mm -hmm. you know, and I bring lots of vegetables, uh, healthy fat, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, also the, um, the fruits, mm -hmm. the berries and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I do enjoy, you know, my Chinese food uh, from time to time, but you know, I'm trying to be chemically healthy. I take supplements mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. particularly vitamin D3 with K2. Okay. And I take essential fatty acids because I don't think I eat enough, you know, uh, fatty fish, fish or things like that. <laughs> and um, that's two things I always do. Uh -huh. And I do take something I created for myself uh -huh. and called Booty Ease, uh -huh. uh, which has a vitamin C, vitamin E, B6, um, selenium, biotin, and uh, zinc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And those are the things I feel is not only important for my brain, but also important for my immune system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the functions. So I do that. I periodically um, taking uh, antioxidants uh, additionally, like curcumin, mm -hmm. and I do that. Um, so I and energetically, and of course, I try to protect my sleep, you know, mm. and uh, and also if if I sleep well, I don't worry about my health. <laughs> if I begin to have broken sleep, I couldn't fall in the sleep. I woke up early worrying about things. I have to be I have to catch myself mm. and I have to make adjustment mm -hmm. on that. So sleep is critical, probably is the most important components of the formula. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I do Qigong exercise. Mm -hmm. I practice Falun Dafa, mm -hmm. and it gives me both a energetic exercise, mm -hmm. meditation, and energy exercise, which again I strongly recommend mm -hmm. because it is original, it is comprehensive, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, it takes. You know, so I do not have to get acupuncture, <laughs> you know, regularly because I take yeah. care of my own energetic flows. Right, right. right so right. that's what it is. Uh -huh. And then for the spiritual components, again, the Falun Dafa provides simple principles, mm -hmm. uh, being truthful, understand the truth of life and the universe and trying to stick with it. Mm -hmm. And then being compassionate, meaning you're kind to everybody on every circumstances as much as possible. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, I have to learn how to be tolerant and forbearant, you mm -hmm. know, to endure challenging situations where I may not be able to stick with the truth and I may not be kind. <laughs> so, so those things I have to apply in my life, very simple, very practical. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is, it works for me, mm -hmm. you know, and they are simple, practical, and uh, I can, you know, I can do that. I'm not perfect. I can do much better. <laughs> it is another issue. Even we know the knowledge, but yeah. we're not necessarily do it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a lot of times our good goals mm -hmm. contradicting with how we emotionally feel and physically feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, every year, mm -hmm. New Year resolution, everybody has that, right? Right, right. But after three months, how many of people do you think they're able to keep it with it? I don't know, maybe 5%? Yeah, 10? less than 8%. Oh, you're, really? you're pretty close. 